And joining the Fred Minnick Show, uh, someone I'm an enormous fan of, and that is the great uh, Dan Gable. Sir, I want to greet you with uh, just a simple, simple grip that I use all the time, the Gable grip. It's an honor. It's an absolute honor to uh, to have a conversation with you, sir. Well, that Gable grip really, you know, I've been doing it for a long time in the sport of wrestling, but the MMA people picked it up and actually named it the Gable grip. Yeah. I didn't have it named the Gable grip until the MMA people got it in there. And I, you know, I actually uh, learned it from uh, the Russians. Okay. Uh, you know, yeah, where you actually have all, all your hand collapse over the other hand. And uh, it's not just this finger stuff because the finger stuff's not strong enough. But you really don't want to hold anything in wrestling anyway. So as you get the gable grip and you get that, you have to have your elbows in, your hips under you, and you're driving and scoring. So you're not going to uh, end up in a stalemate. We don't like stalemates. No, no, not at all. You got always got to be active and scoring. And this is something that you sent me. Uh, so I'm obviously, I'm a, you know, I have, uh, I'm surrounded by beverages everywhere. I'm a drinks critic. And you sent me uh, your beer. I'm really excited to try this. Well, it looks like you got a 12-pack there, is it? Yeah, I got a 12-pack. Well, that'll last you for a little while. Yeah, but at least. If it's good, if it's good, it shouldn't last that long. Well, you know what's crazy? I am, my favorite beer is a golden lager. So Pilsners and uh, lagers are my favorite. Well, that's what this is, Gable Golden Lager. Cheers. Here, here we go. Let's take a look at this here. All right, cheers. Yeah, thank you. And you know what? The We have a wrestling museum in my hometown. It's the National Wrestling Hall of Fame Gable mm -hmm. Museum. It's after the, the National Wrestling Hall of Fame in Stillwater, Oklahoma. They, they kind of own us. But we have a, a, a subsidiary one, and it's in my hometown of Waterloo. And... They give contributions every time you drink. So every time we're drinking a beer, we get a little money at that museum. Oh, that's awesome. Well, we've only had the beer out maybe three or four years, and we've, we're have we well over $100,000. So somebody's uh, given us a pretty good donation. That's incredible. Well, you know, I went to Oklahoma State, and uh, John Smith, who just retired, is coming out with a beer how do you feel about that? You uh, do you feel like that oh. the Oklahoma State Iowa rivalry is heating up again in the beer scene? Oh yeah, I think it's absolutely great because uh, we in wrestling, we know we're not basketball or football yet. You know, we're we're worldwide, we're known, but uh, and worldwide we got a few issues because some of our best wrestling countries are kind of having a war off the mat too. Yeah, you know, like Russia, like Iran. Those yeah. are our best wrestling countries. And all those, uh, you know, Ukraine, and, uh, you know, we got a lot of Japan did really well this year in the world. We are really good, too. But Japan really was like, whoa, uh, where they come from? I mean, they've been good. But all of a sudden, they kind of dominated the, the worlds in some of the competition. Uh, or I should say the Olympics this year in wrestling. Yeah. Well, now we got uh, we got two of the greatest coaches of all time with uh, dueling beers. So I can't. I got to do a blind tasting against the two to see who I'd pick. Although I, th I think this one's going to be hard to beat. This is well. This is very tasty. It, well, here's the thing. Because you're telling me that it's good beer, I'm taking your word. So yes, sir. I'm going back to the the people that brew it, and I give my input all the time. But I base it on like a lot of people telling me what it is. So it's been back. Uh, getting refined a couple times that's awesome uh, it, it's not the original i mean it's not exactly the original okay we try to come back and make it better every time so you're telling me it might be okay we might stick with it for this year yeah this is great uh this is this is what i would have with a nice slice of pizza or uh even a burger you know this is a good this is a good uh pub beer or well, or when uh at the ncaa's when uh you know this year in philly i might I might crack one open while i'm watching uh some wrestling but hey, the reason why we're ch chatting is uh, I I'm affiliated with the with the Bellerman program. Uh, my boys are in um, 
the regional training center there. They they go to kids camp at at the Bellarmine Club. There are only Division One wrestling program in the state, and of course, Coach Ned Shuck used to wrestle for you, and he has been a godsend for Kentucky. This part of the world does not experience wrestling like I did growing up, and like you did in Iowa, and so. I believe that this uh, this Friday, November 15th, Iowa coming to Bellarmine is the biggest moment in history for Kentucky wrestling. Uh, you, you might be right. Uh, you know, Iowa's rated number two in the country, and they're not happy about that. Mm. And it's, the other school is Oklahoma. Uh, you know, uh, the, uh, usually we're battling the, uh, the, the Oklahoma schools, and they're a little bit down right now, so they're they're kind of need a kick in the butt a little bit too. But Penn State has been the dominant team at the top with, you know, with, uh, you know, with their program, and they, you know, they've won a lot of Big Ten championships and 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 big and the NCAA championships in the last few years. So, uh, you know, it's uh, it, it, the state of Pennsylvania, the state of Oklahoma, and the state of Iowa. We're always good. It's just a matter of which one is the best. Yeah. Now with the with this duel, are they are they bringing all their starters, or do you know what the team's going to look like? Well, I think anytime you're trying to move up, you don't take chances. Yeah. Uh, by that I mean, you know, you got to even though you got to promote the sport. You still got to show what is out there at that highest level, and let people witness. Hmm. And so, uh, you know, he's, nobody, he's, nobody's going to try to rub it in anyway. Uh, well, maybe the coach Brands did a couple times when he was wrestling, <laughs> uh, you know, but not really. He just knew how to wrestle the whole match, knew how to wrestle technically and tactically the whole match. And even at times when he might be losing at the beginning, he was never losing at the end. So uh, I don't think that you you got a coaching staff that is happy being number two in the country. And uh, because of that, they definitely want to promote. They like a former coach and Chuck that was at the Hawkeyes in at Iowa. But they're not going to, for that moment of two hours or 90 minutes on the mat, I don't think there's going to be any let up. I don't think there's going to be any let up. You don't. So you don't. You don't think that they're going to like bring in like their third and fourth stringers here. They they're bringing their starters. I think their starters need to be enhanced, mm. and it doesn't have to be just through this type of uh, of a, a product. I think every time out, they have to make some kind of a a game. Right. And they have to look forward because right now Penn State's ahead of everybody by a hundred points, you know, and, and, and uh, if somebody's going to knock them off, you know, they got to look at what they need. They can't afford a week of practice. They can't afford a match where things don't go the way in the direction they want to. And, you know, a bottom line is, they're not going to come in here to try to rub it in, but they're coming in here with appreciation. But they have to do what they have to do to make sure at the end of the season that they have the best chance to be the national championships uh, team. And that's uh, the brands have been that way. They're world and Olympic champions besides uh, NCAA champions. And so there's I don't think there's going to be much let up. Have you had a chance to see many uh, Bellarmine matches? I've only talked to Ned mm-hmm. a little bit, and I see where he, you know, he's was in a pretty good tournament the other day, and the team ended up in third place. Well, yeah, I think only behind a couple good teams like Michigan and Ohio State or something like that. Yeah, it took uh, third at the Clarion those, Open. Yeah, yeah. So you know, obviously they got some, and they've been waiting for how long? I mean, I don't. What kind of rule is that? that you can't wrestle for four years if you want to go D1. I think that's a rule that, you know, it's got to be looked at a little bit. But at the same time, uh, they maybe want to make sure that the team wants to be there. And I, uh, we, we need this support, but we don't want to be held back. So that rule might want to be looked at. Yeah, well, let's just say that the NCAA could use a, 
an exhaustive overhaul. <laughs> they're, they're, <laughs> that's just one thing. Uh, but my goodness. Yeah. Uh, but Bellarmine, you know, Bellarmine is, um, I think, uh, WrestleStat had them already in their top 50 based on, um, um, based on, you know, projected rankings and how some of the wrestlers wrestled in the past. Um, but they've got some, they've got some really good wrestlers, especially at like 125. Uh, the 149 wrestler, uh, Zach Cohen is an, is excellent. The 174 wrestler, you know, I mean, these are potentially, uh, NCAA qualifiers in the program's very first year. This is a, uh, this is a fantastic program, um, and I get to watch them wrestle all the time, and just to see the chemistry they have, and the guts, and the heart, and the determination. They're they are the uh, I think they're going to be a Cinderella story this year. But what do you, what advice would you have to the the Bellarmine wrestling team? Of course, they're facing your alma mater. <laughs> But what would you tell well, a wrestler going into this? Now wait a minute. Now, now wait a minute. Now, yeah, wait not a your alma mater, but your 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 there former you team. Go. Yeah, I'm an Iowa State Cyclone. I know, I, I know. When I was a wrestler, but then I coached, and we won 25 straight Big Ten titles at one time when I was there between an assistant and 21, four as an assistant and 21 as a head coach. So my my you know my legacy uh, is both, but at the mo but more near is my coaching, and. And my family, they've been raised in Iowa City. So when I talk about going somewhere, if they ever wanted me to re go back to Ames, which they did, and in, or Oklahoma State, which they did, uh, you know, my family just said, wow, uh, can you come home on weekends? <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't really have a ch much choice there unless I wanted Fair, to uh, yeah. break it up. But no, I mean, you guys, Kentucky, I mean – I mean, when I, in, in my year, in 72, we had the youngest wrestler ever to make the Olympic team, probably, in Jimmy Carr. I mean, I mean, he, he, you know, he's, they got some Kentucky, uh, uh, the Cars are, have some Kentucky backgrounds. Fletcher Carr, I think, was coaching at the University of Kentucky at one time. I, you, you know, you probably don't know all this, but there's some history there in Kentucky. But, uh, you know, if I look at the state, I don't know who touches you but it seems to me like there there is quite a bit of a pretty good wrestling around uh mm -hmm. the state there i mean tennessee even you know i mean you guys close to tennessee i mean yeah so tennessee indiana illinois would be our major states oh. uh, alabama's been coming on strong as a pretty prominent wrestling state a lot of talent coming out of alabama uh, Georgia as well is not too far, but I'd uh, say the biggest wrestling state near would be Indiana. Well, actually, Illinois. You think Illinois is bigger than Indiana? Yes, they yeah. are. And, uh, I mean, just from a standpoint of history, uh, kids wrestling, hmm. uh, even the number of programs uh, in college, you know, that type of stuff. So Illinois... Uh, and Illinois is, you know, it's connected to Iowa too, you know, right there in the border. So, uh, it's, it's, uh, now, you know, cause when I think of Louisville, you know, I'm, if I go back my first, well, I was born into wrestling, but we did, couldn't wrestle until my seventh grade year, actually competition back then. Mm. So, but I had baseball. I mean, I had baseball going from right the beginning too. And I, and my, my hero was a guy from, uh, the Yankees named Mantle, Mickey Mantle. And I was, uh, I had one of those Louisville sluggers, you know, by, by far. And, and it's known, it's known a lot for baseball. And so I got that history with me, but my history now, the, the best history with me is wrestling. And, you know, that's what we want to do. We want to come in and we don't want to make so much history. We want to have that this state create some history and, and, uh, give more kids opportunities and have another state that when you say the state, it's not just uh, horse racing or, or uh, something like that. It's, it's uh, wrestling as well. And that's the object because wrestling can touch everybody now. I mean, we don't, not just boys, especially we're, I think we're the leading mm -hmm. uh, sport in for females, but you know, people that are actually been injured, 
uh, a lot in their life. I mean, they they can go out and wrestle with one arm and you know a leg cut off on a knee, and they have that chance to wrestle. And we've had some champions. I mean, NCAA champions be able to perform at that high level. So it's pretty much for everybody and. And uh, we just got to get out there and get it noticed a little bit. And here's a really good chance to get it noticed with Iowa Absolutely. in their tradition coming to uh, Bellarmine, right? Is that Bellarmine? Close? Yeah, yeah, Bellarmine. Bellarmine. Yeah. Bellarmine. You know, you see, that's the thing. You know, you got to get it somewhere. It's it's a common name. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, Bellarmine. you're going. You're you doing know, I a think uh, of it as men, but that not yet. But uh, yeah. I've heard it pronounced a few different ways, um, especially when the when they get a ESPN Plus doing the commentating uh, when they do a meet. Uh, but we have a meet and greet with you uh, Friday, the 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 day of the duel. So we've already sold a lot of tickets, but there's still some available, and uh, folks can go to. Let me just double check this. Um, but tell us, you know, you're, you're coming to, uh, to sign some books and you're going to, you're going to be uh, doing a meet and greet with folks. I'm going to meet and greet and I'm going to be able to communicate. I'm going to get up and I'm going to speak. Awesome. And, and I, I want to, you know, give a, a story that's memorable and one that they walk away with. They can walk away with some beer, maybe, if, you know, like, you know, but, but more than that. They can walk away with some motivation and some inspiration, and they can learn a little bit more about uh, what you have locally right now hmm. that is uh, doing a good job. So, you know, I don't plan on, uh, you know, here's the thing. I've been around for a long time, and with that in mind, there's not, never been a, a, a portion of my life that has not been successful. Sure, I've had some tragedies and uh you know some things that maybe i could have prevented uh even and and a tragedy i'm talking about human life but i have had some losses in the sport that it's not a tragedy but maybe to me at the time i thought it was but compared to what so you know anytime you're uh you know you win for seven straight years you win 181 straight matches as a high school and college student and you have one more to go and you don't win it there's something wrong with you uh a little bit uh but you have to give the credit to the guy that beat you you know that type of thing but it it taught me that you know you can't you can't just overlook anything in life you know that type of thing so then uh you know we win maybe uh nine championships in a row as an ncaa team division one i mean who wins nine straight championships? Well, Iowa Wrestling did. But, you know, I looked at it because we the record was 10, and we were going to tie the record, I believe. I believe we we're going to tie it or get it. But we didn't get it. And, you know, there's I go back, and there's reasons. And I'm able to go back because I document myself really well. And, you know, most of it isn't just because I something I did that year. I go back, it's some things I've done for maybe two or three, four years, but yet we weren't still getting beat, but we were disintegrating a little bit and I couldn't even see it. So it it takes those losses sometimes to really get you going again. And I'll, uh, you know, be glad to uh, share some of that with the people that show up. I mean, it's not just about sports. It's about whether you're in a, a business or whether you ha- want to have a good family, it's whether you want to have a good life. To be honest with you, and that's, and awesome. that's what uh, they can walk away with. And folks can go to uh, Knights R T C. That's K N I G H T S R T C dot com. That's Knights R T C dot com to spend some time with the legendary coach and wrestler Dan Gable, Coach Gable. I- I, I look forward to sitting down with you again and having another beer with you, but uh, I can't thank you enough for uh, helping promote the uh, the duel between Iowa and Bellarmine. I, I genuinely believe this is going to be an incredible night. I cannot wait. Yeah, let me say that word one more time. Bellarmine? Bellarmine. 
<laughs> I got it right. I got there you it go. Right. Yeah, if I by chance, you know, do t too good, I'll never forget it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know, uh, a, a takedown is a is a win in a lot of ways, but a win is a win, and I think I think there's a couple of weight classes the wrestlers. They have big hearts, and you know, in wrestling, in wrestling, it, the seed doesn't matter, um, the ranking doesn't matter, none of that matters once you step on that mat and shake hands. None of it matters. Well, they got, they have to fill the arena. I don't know how yep. big the arena is, but they better fill it. That's right. They're gonna. All right. Cheers, my friend. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.